Basement's Alien <laughs> Interview Program. Um, and I'm if I folks, this do... folks, this is not a joke. He's not joking around. So, just to let you know, you don't have to turn off the the channel or go great. You know, get yourself a drink, nestle yourself in your couch, your chair, your car, because what we're about to talk about is going to blow your mind. So, I just wanted to give you that caveat. Yeah, and I, I, if I could do this correctly, now this is, if if I am doing it correctly. This is video of the thing you're speaking of, correct? That is uh, correct, sir. So that is correct. I'll uh <laughs> well, let's you know, let's just first let's just first it's fake. Have you ever seen an alien? No. Okay. So number one, uh if you were hoaxing a video of an alien, why would you make it terracotta tan? Not yeah. gray. Why would you have round eyes and not almond? Um Andrew Burlington in the United Kingdom did a frame-by-frame -frame analysis where skin movements around the eyes, the eyes have different four or five different shapes. The mouth on this creature, when he starts to get into a respiratory <laughs> problem, opens and closes instantaneously. To do that in 1996 is, is you know, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. The weird monitor where it doesn't go across, it goes up and down, up and down. And there doesn't look like there's a lot of electronics in the back of that monitor. And then the two medics that come in to, to tend to this being, and I'll, and I'll get to the whole story, but I'm just saying, if you were hoaxing this video and making it a Hollywood production, you'd have these in bio containment suits. They come in in short sleeve scrubs, their college gray shirt underneath. You know, kind of like, oh, we've had this thing for five years. This is not, you know, any kind of a of a contaminant to me. And then the and then the whistleblower Victor had such a scientific language in speech. I, I knew Hollywood. I'm like, there is no way a 23 year old screenwriter in 1996 wrote the, the Victor testimony or his his description of, of what went on. And uh, five years ago, I had had enough of it bothering me. And especially after I asked John McCain, I don't know if you wanted to put the video back on. On the bottom of the video is the acronym DNI slash 27. And I asked and I asked John McCain on a bus tour, what is the Department of Naval Intelligence? Joe, he turned to like um, a demon almost. And he just snapped and he goes, you don't need to know anything about that. And he snapped his head and he walked back into the tour bus. I'm like, wait a minute. Why is a sitting United States senator just got pissed off over a hoaxed video with three letters on the bottom of it? What? what I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Um, and that stayed in my mind forever in the, in, the, in the testimony of this whistleblower. And this became really the most infamous alien video and the most infamous whistleblower in UFO history. But everyone has pushed it to the side because it was so casual. It had such a non-Hollywood production to it. And people thought there's no way we could ever break into S4. And um, by the way, the medic to the left uh, is a, was a doctor who died in California. I talked to his widow. Folks, I'm not lying here. Uh, if you go back to the medic, the two doctors that tend to him, it's forward, I think. It's more for there. Okay, the guy with the gauze, the doctor with the gauze, with the mouth, because fluids pouring out of the alien's mouth. I'm not getting ahead of myself. He is practicing medicine in Connecticut right now. And wow. they will not take my call, phone call anymore. The doctor who you see the, the headdress uh, pointing out from the, the arm, he died in California about four years ago. I talked to his second wife, who's the widow. And I told her the whole story very gently because you, you're explaining to these people that their loved ones were part of the most bizarre story in history. It's like telling someone their, their father was a transsexual or, you know, was a transvestite at night. And, you know, it's that kind of the sensitivity of approaching these, these people. And she said, well, that makes, again, this was the, the second wife of the doctor to, the, to our left said to me, pause. Well, that certainly explains why he never mentioned anything about being in the Army Medical Corps. I don't even know what the Army Medical Corps is. Is that the medical division of the Army? Seriously. And then I said, well, can you explain that a little? She's like, John, I'm, I'm 80 years old. Everybody that's been in the military in my age, you know, always has great funny stories. Or, you know, if they weren't in combat, they have great, 
hysterical stories of being in where they always talk about their bases or their buddies. My husband never mentioned a word about his time in the Army Medical Corps. And here was another moment where I went, what, what is going on? How did I find these people? Yeah. I went on podcasts. I'm like, how am and, and this journey was an all doom and gloom. So forgive my glibness. I said to myself, how am I going to break into a facility, the most top secret government facility, S4, located south of Area 51, underground? How am I going to break into this facility 25 years in the past and 90% <laughs> of my witnesses are geriatric or dead? Now think about that. And I went on podcast after podcast or any internet radio show I could to be a bird dog, to flush out someone. Because a Chicago detective always told me, John, people love to talk. I don't care if it's the most sensitive information in the world or, you know, what they did. You know, they, they stole pens at the bank. They yeah. love to talk. Go to them, approach them with sincerity, honesty. Don't use any gotcha questions. And sure enough, about two months after I did the Caravan to Midnight show with John, with John B. Wells, I started getting emails from a person that claimed he worked and did work for the Defense Intelligence Agency, which ran the re alien inter retention and interrogation program at S4. And it took him a year of talking to me e via email, seeing my sincerity, seeing if I would, you know, like wrestling, if I would protect it to some degree, that I would take this seriously. And on my birthday of last year, coincidentally, this man sent me an email, Joe, of every single military person behind that camera in the viewing room looking at this alien being during that segment. I was told what the questions were about. I was giving the name and rank of every person. Um, I was given the names of the two doctors, which is how I got to call one of the wives and how I found the other one in medical practice. 